Dawn, and I'm going to read a great story. It's called The Three Wishes. Many years ago, a woodcutter and his wife lived in a small cottage at the edge of a forest. Except for an old horse named Max, they had very few possessions. Each day, when the weather permitted, the woodcutter would hitch up the horse and go into the forest to cut logs, which they then dragged back to the cottage. During the cold winter months, when the winds blew and the snow covered the ground, he would split logs for the fire or saw them into planks from which he made tables and benches. These he sowed in the nearby village. One day, as he led his horse through the woods, he came upon a large oak tree. Well, he exclaimed, look at this fine tree. I should be able to make quite a few tables from that thick trunk, and the top branches will supply me with plenty of firewood. As he reached for his axe, he heard a small voice say, Wait, please. Looking around, he saw a small elf, dressed all in green, sitting at the base of the tree. Please, Mr. Woodcutter, said the elf very politely. Don't cut down this tree. I live here, down among the roots, and it is most comfortable. And he pointed to a small door at the base of the tree. If you cut down the tree, the elf continued, the roots will die. Water will soon seep in, and I shall be forced to move. There are other fine trees in the forest. Perhaps you are right, said the woodcutter. I would not like to destroy anyone's home. I will look for another tree to cut down. Thank you, said the elf. And for that kind deed, I will grant you three wishes. You may wish for anything you like, but you must choose them wisely. Remember, you have only three. And with that, he opened the door at the base of the tree and disappeared. When the woodcutter returned to the cottage that evening, he told his wife what had occurred. She became very excited. Oh, this is wonderful, she exclaimed. We can wish for anything in the whole world. We certainly can, agreed the woodcutter. We could wish for lots of money, or perhaps another horse to help poor old Max drag the logs from the woods. With lots of money, you can buy another horse. Or we could have a grand house in the village, and you wouldn't have to work anymore, said his wife. Well, said the woodcutter, it will take lots of thought before we decide anything. Right now, I don't want to think about another thing except my supper. What is there to eat? I have made lentil soup, answered his wife. Lentil soup, cried the woodcutter. This will be the third time this week that we have had lentil soup. Is there nothing else? Just for once, I wish that I could have a big, fat, juicy sausage. At that very moment, a strange sound was heard. And suddenly, there was a big, fat, juicy sausage lying on a plate on the table. Oh, you silly man, cried the woodcutter's wife. See what you have done. You have wasted one of the wishes. How could you have been so foolish? I wish that your big, fat, juicy sausage was stuck on the end of your nose. Once again, there was a strange sound. And there the woodcutter stood with the sausage stuck to the end of his nose. The woodcutter was very angry. Now look what you have done, he cried. You have used the second wish, and now I have this ugly sausage stuck to the end of my nose. He pulled and pulled, but the sausage would not come off. Mm, I am very sorry, said his wife, but at least we have one more wish left. Perhaps we should wish for the house in the village. Let's not worry about it now. Oh, no said her husband. I'm not going to spend the rest of my life with a sausage hanging from my nose. It is most uncomfortable, 
and I hate to think of what will happen if I sneeze. We must use our last wish to get this sausage off my nose. And so they made the last wish. Again, there was a strange sound, and in a twinkling, the sausage disappeared. Shortly afterward, the woodcutter and his wife sat down to the table and ate their supper of lentil soup. Neither of them ever mentioned the elf or the three wishes again.